This podcast is brought to you by eBiz Radio, the place to go if you want to know about the world of business or the business of the world. For daily podcast and article uploads, go to ebizradio.com or follow us on Twitter at Ebiz Radio Global. My name is Nick Snow and joining me for an edition of Ebiz Technology is Pierre van der Hoeven, founder and CEO of Tulu and Tulu. Uh, of course, downloadable on Google Play and or, as well as iOS. Uh, Pierre, thank you very much for joining me. I'm very excited to talk to you because, of course, um, we'll get to a little bit later. But, of course, Ebiz Radio has teamed up with you guys to bring uh, low data audio to Africa. And, of course, that's what you do. It's all about bringing low data audio and getting information out there to the people um, who want it and need it it the most. So welcome to you. Thank you very much for joining me. And tell me a little bit about yourself and your journey to create Tulu and Tulu. Hi, Nick. Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, I've been in the media industry for many years. I won't say how many. Um, for a long time now, I started in, in TV at the SABC. Then I uh, was involved in launching ETV and YFM. So I did a bit of radio and then got into the online space. Um, a couple of years ago, I saw the opportunity for mobile devices and putting content onto mobile devices. Yes. Um, and yeah, sort of mid-last year, we launched a Tool & Tool app. Um, and we did it mainly with streaming TV. And now we've just launched streaming radio. Wonderful. Um, so really what we're trying to do is create a home for African content via an app. And people can receive it on their mobile devices uh, or tablets. And that's really yes. what we're about. It's about getting information to mobile devices. Brilliant. Brilliant. Now, now tell me about the, the intricacies and the technology involved in doing that. Because as we well know, anything mobile and anything where we're connecting to the internet, we are spending uh, data, which is money, which is expensive, yeah. particularly yeah. in Africa. But uh, your whole idea with Tulu and Tulu was to bring down the price of the data. How have you gone about that? And how do we get the information out there at such a low cost? Well, yeah, in Africa, you've got to do, do, do things differently. So we had to develop a, a, a method of using less data um, because of the lack of infrastructure. But uh, please be in mind, it's also available via Wi-Fi, and then it's absolutely free. So that, right. there, there were two, two basic things we did differently. Um, we make sure that all our streams are at the minimum data level to be um, to not only work, um, but also to be cheap for the end user. Um, so, yeah, there's all kinds of technology. I won't go into too much detail how we do it, but there's technology to ensure that you can watch a TV channel at about 30 megs an hour, which in today's right. cost, is, it's, it's not expensive. Not at all. Um, and the benefit of using this data is that we can go on low bandwidth connections. So we can even you can watch a TV channel on your mobile device when you connect it via an edge mobile network. That's brilliant because, as we know, the normal costs if you're going to download uh, or, or stream things, it's usually about ten times that. You're looking at yeah. maybe three hundred yeah. megabytes or more per hour, and that is pretty much the amount of data people allot themselves in any given month. I know a lot of mobile contracts and that. That's about the amount of data people budget for. So to be able yeah. to access ten times more information in any given month is really, I imagine, economically quite powerful. Yeah, it is, and it, it makes it a lot more, uh, cheaper. We we also provide two streams. So the one would use, as I say, the low amounts of data, but if you want a slightly better quality picture f uh, for the TV streaming, we've got a, kind of a plus button, and then that ups the quality, um, and then you're consuming about 100 megs an hour. Uh, but again, it's available on Wi-Fi. So if you connect via Wi-Fi, and that could be in a restaurant or your own Wi-Fi network, it's 100% free. Wow. So our model is about reach. We're trying to reach as many people as possible, um, and we're trying to break down the barriers to entry. So most of the TV products you've seen coming or that have come on the market in the last, I don't know, two, three years, they're all pay models. Um, we, our content's free. The, the app is free to download. It's 100% free on Wi-Fi, and all you pay for is the mobile data if you connect it via a mobile connection. 
Absolutely brilliant. And of course, when all you have to do is think about that one simple thing that you need to achieve to be able to access inf this information, it makes it even easier. So now tell me about some of the countries um, that you are primarily focusing on and why you've decided to focus there. Yeah, so we have, we because we are app and it's IP, we, we reach any country in the world. Um, so it's a global transmission. So eBiz is now going global. Anybody can access um, the TV or radio channels anywhere in the world. But we focused our content on African content. Um, that means people in Africa will watch the content and people who live outside of Africa but are still interested in Africa will, will watch our content. Um, our marketing efforts have been focused mainly on um, South Africa, Nigeria, Ghana, uh, Kenya, and Tanzania. Right. Um, but we've got downloads of our app. We've, uh, we, we launched late last year. We've got over 130,000 downloads already Absolutely in 154 incredible. countries. But the, the main ones are South Africa, as I said earlier, South Africa, Nigeria, Ghana, Kenya, Tanzania. Brilliant. And of course, uh, the obviously expansion within Africa and within the African market, uh, was that uh, a strategic uh, of you or is it just, did, it, did it really just happen to be that way? No, no, that, that was absolutely de deliberate. Um, I think it's time Africans told their own story. Yes. Um, so we're trying to create African content. There, again, there are other products where people think you need to get A-grade a Hollywood movies. And we've taken a different view. We, we believe in the concept of local content. Um, so we've launched content relevant to Africans. Yes, and I think that's brilliant because it's an African solution, once again, for an African problem. We're yeah. not trying to take a American or European idea of how we think it should be done. We're the ones who live here. We're the ones who deal with the, um, you know, the, the, the low electricity and then water problems and then delivery problems and service delivery. We were the ones who deal with it every day. So we are the ideal people to figure yeah, out how to absolutely. get around it. And, uh, of and course, I think it's, I'll say again, it's time Africans t told their own story. Um, you know, we do have some international channels. We've got Al Jazeera, but I think a lot of Africans are interested in news, so we don't see any conflict with the philosophy. But most of our channels are local content channels with Africans telling the African story and not foreigners flying in, yes. whipping a camera around and telling us what we're all about. Exactly. Um, because what they think we're all about is just a perception of what they have of us. Whereas we've actually yeah. been here just a little bit longer and we kind of do know what we're talking about. Uh, a couple of thousand years, it's nothing, it's nothing. But at the end of the day, I love what you guys are trying to do and I think it's fantastic and it's wonderful to be wonderful to be involved with you as well. Um, if obviously in the future you guys want to expand and you want to add on more channels, what would be the process that people would follow if they had independent channels that they wanted to add to your platform? Well, they simply need to contact us. They can do it via the website, tulintulu.com, or they can email us um, uh, all the details on the website. Um, they can use social media. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. Um, yeah, and, and talk to us. We're always looking for more content. Um, our, our vision is to create a pan-African platform, um, right. sort of like Facebook, except we use... We use um, radio, TV, and we're going to launch downloadable content uh, in the near future. Yes. Um, yeah, so we've currently got 15 uh, 24 7 streaming channels, and the radio stations are changing hourly. So <laughs> yes. I, think we, I think we launched three today. Wonderful. Um, yeah, I see the new ones that have come on are 702 Cape Talk. We've got you guys, uh, we've got KFM, we've got OFM, we've got Rise FM, we, yeah, we've got Vuma FM, Voice of Vits. So we've just launched radio streaming, um, and we've now got a, a nice offering for radio as well. The other thing that's quite yes. interesting is for both radio and for the TV channels, we display the Twitter feed on the screen. So you that's basically got nice. the second screen on the same screen, which provides people the opportunity to interact with each other and with the, the, the channel or the, the radio station or the TV station itself. So you can actually watch TV and read Twitter at the same time. So you've really upped the level of interaction. You've made it completely interactive and, and you just want to engage as many people as possible. 
Yeah, the other thing we've done is it's linked to social media and it's a personal experience. So your app, you personalize to the channels you like. The, the the big reality with mobile is is it's it's exploded, but it's my device. It's a personal device. So we've given people the ability to tailor it for themselves. Yes. Um. So yeah, if you if you've downloaded the app, you'll see there's a section called favorites. You just go play a channel, hit the favorite button, and it appears under your favorites. And obviously, everybody's favorites are going to be different. Yes. No. Most definitely. And so it's all about. I think at the end of the day, your 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 inclusion of social media on the platform is going to bring like-minded people together. It's going to bring people people who are interested in the same topics together. It's like this whole live tweeting thing that people do of, of sitcoms or television shows like Game of Thrones or Grey's Anatomy yeah. where people will literally go onto Twitter and live tweet, watch the episode and interact with people around them. Now, if you're doing this with a low-cost plat- uh, low platform with things like news and information, you're engaging on a whole new level. It's no longer just about a TV program about doctors. It's about real news and real really getting involved with what's going on in the world around you. And the amazing thing about a connected device is you can you can hit a button and go to a website. You can we 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 gather information instantly. We can do surveys, we can talk to people, we can ask them questions, they can leave the app and go and buy something. Um, so the connected device just puts it in a whole new uh, environment. Firstly, the analytics are fantastic. So I can tell you how many people are watching Till and Tulu the second. I can tell you which country they're in. I can tell you what device they're using. I can tell you what network they're on. So this connected device thing is is amazing from a from a media perspective. It's uh, there's there's just a wealth. Uh, in fact, an overwhelming amount of information. But it's yes. uh, it's the only grail for media. Yes, absolutely. You know, I'll be able to tell you tomorrow basically how many people listen to this interview. Absolutely, which is going to be fantastic to know because it's feedback and it. it helps you engage with future people. And on the topic of the future, Pierre, where do you want to see this app and where do you want to see this business in the next, say, five to ten years? How would you like to see it grow? Well, we want to be the biggest app in Africa. Um, we want to be on 300 million smartphones in Africa, and by five years' time, that's going to be 700 million smartphones. Wonderful. Uh, we want to be the app that all Africans have if they want to access content, they hit one button. Um, a lot of people are not really up to speed with browsers and typing in www. They just need an app. So our job is to curate content. Uh, make it a, a compelling value proposition, and I think the best value proposition is good, free content. Yes. Um, and our ambition is to then be the biggest pan-African advertising platform um, yeah, in the world. So we, we, uh, we're thinking big. <laughs> yes, yes, which we love to hear because it's a, it really is time that we got that African story out there, African solutions for African problems. And, you know, we are, we're a wonderful continent. We are our own superpower. You know, we have, we have the ability to, to bring so much to the world uh, in, the way that, uh, of, in the way of doing business. And uh, it's about time that we, got, we really got out there. So it's very, very exciting time. So finally, once again, if you'd just like to run over those details uh, before we go of how people can get in touch with you, um, of course, they they know they can download the app um, from the Google Play Store or the iOS uh, App Store, but how do they get in touch with you directly if they want to find out more about engaging their content on your platform? Okay, well, they can go to the website um, or they can email me directly. And my personal email is pierre at tulantulu.com, P-I-E-R-R-E at tulantulu.com. Um, and just a, a final note, you know, we when we launched this, we never knew how big it was going to be. Um, but in, yeah, in eight months, we got 130,000 downloads. So I think that proves that there is a demand for this kind yes. of content. Um, and it can only get better. The, the, the more quality African content we can get, the better the, the, the value proposition is going to be. So I think yes. the first step is to uh, go to the App Store. Um, go to Google Play or the iOS App Store and, and download the app. Um, and then there are various feedback mechanisms to tell us um, whether you like the content, don't like the content. So we urge everybody, download the app and talk to us. 
brilliant. I think I'm going to go do it myself right now. It's about time that I got involved. So uh, on that note, I'm going to leave it right there and bring this uh, edition of eBiz Technology to an end. Pierre, it was an absolute pleasure. Thank you ta- for taking the time to yeah, chat to me. Yeah, when they download the app, they can listen to eBiz Radio. They can, exactly. They could be listening to this right now. <laughs> they just, they just, exactly, they just need to do just that for fresh content, of course, every single day, which is what it's about. And on that note, Pierre, thanks so much for taking the time to chat to me on Excellent. eBiz Radio. Thank you, Nick.